It was a moonless night, the air thick with an unsettling stillness, as my wife and I drove home from a late night party. The dim glow of streetlights cast feeble pools of light on the deserted road. Exhausted laughter echoed in our ears, remnants of the revelry we were leaving behind. As we navigated the winding lanes, the dim glow of distant headlights vanished, leaving us enveloped in an inky darkness. The atmosphere shifted, becoming dense and foreboding, and an uneasy silence settled within the confines of our car. That's when we saw her, a little girl standing by the roadside. Her figure, shrouded in the obscurity of the night, seemed almost ethereal. My wife, ever compassionate, urged me to stop. Concern etched her face as we rolled down the window, inviting the frigid night air inside. Are you lost, sweetheart? My wife called out, her voice a gentle melody breaking the silence. The little girl turned, her eyes glinting like twin silver orbs in the darkness. Her presence felt surreal, like a haunting dream refusing to dissipate. She spoke in a hushed whisper, her words carrying an eerie innocence that sent shivers down my spine. I need to go home, she uttered, her gaze fixated on something unseen. Without much thought, we invited her into our car, her small form occupying the back seat. The air inside grew colder, and a palpable tension clung to the atmosphere as we resumed our journey the road stretching ahead like an endless abyss. Her directions were cryptic, leading us deeper into an unfamiliar part of the town. The houses, bathed in the sickly glow of dim streetlights, looked dilapidated, windows shattered like vacant eyes. Unease crept over us, a curiosity mingled with trepidation, urging us to continue. Finally, we arrived at an old mansion, a relic of a forgotten era, standing amidst overgrown weeds and twisted trees. The little girl pointed towards the decaying structure, her eyes now reflecting the haunting silhouette of the mansion. This is my home, she murmured, her voice echoing with a resonance that seemed to pierce the fabric of reality. Reluctantly, my wife and I stepped out of the car, the cold night biting into our bones. The mansion loomed before us, its shadowy corridors and sagging walls telling tales of a past best not buried. The little girl led us inside, her footsteps silent against the creaking floorboards as we ventured deeper into the heart of the mansion. The air grew thick with an otherworldly energy. Whispers danced through the abandoned halls, telling of a tragedy that had unfolded within these walls. A tale of sorrow, betrayal, and a spectral innocence forever trapped in the echo of time. Rooms revealed glimpses of the past, flickering candlelight, the rustle of silk dresses, and the muffled sobs of a long-forgotten tragedy. The little girl's silver eyes held the weight of centuries, witnessing the horror that had befallen her in this accursed place. In a room Draped in shadows, the air congealed into an oppressive force. The little girl pointed towards a faded portrait, her spectral fingers trembling. There, frozen in time, was an image of a family torn apart by secrets and malevolence. The realization struck me. A darkness had consumed this family, leaving behind a lingering curse that ensnared any who dared cross its path. that eluded her even in death. As the night wore on, the mansion became a labyrinth of horrors, each step resonating with the anguished echoes of the past. The little girl, once an innocent victim, had become a harbinger of doom, forever bound to the spectral tapestry of the mansion. Terrified, my wife and I fled the mansion, the spectral innocence trailing behind like a haunted Night air outside felt suffocating, tainted by
by the malevolence that lingered within those decaying walls. We drove away, the little girl's mournful gaze fading into the obscurity of the night. The weight of the past clung to us, a reminder that some horrors are not confined to the realm of the living. And so, as we left that accursed mansion behind, the spectral innocence became a ghostly specter in our memories, an embodiment of a darkness that forever shadows the line between the living and the dead. In the heart of the town, veiled in perpetual fog, stood an abandoned carnival named the Sable Carnival. This ominous amusement park was once a place of joy and laughter, but a tragic incident cast a malevolent shadow over its vibrant history. A daring thrill-seeker and their group of friends, fascinated by the chilling tales surrounding the carnival, decided to explore its forgotten rides and attractions. The moment they stepped through the rusted gates, the air became heavy with an otherworldly presence. As they traversed the desolate carnival grounds, the rides creaked to life, moving with an unsettling rhythm of their own. Distorted carnival music echoed through the fog, accompanied by ghostly laughter that seemed to emerge from the shadows. The group found themselves drawn to a dilapidated tent where a once grand magician had met a tragic end. Within the tent, the group encountered a spectral figure the tormented spirit of the magician. The carnival's twisted history unfolded, revealing a tale of jealousy, dark rituals, and a curse that bound the souls of performers to the decaying carnival grounds. The thrill-seeker and their friends became unwitting participants in the ghostly carnival's macabre show. On the outskirts of the town lay an abandoned asylum, its crumbling walls hiding a malevolent secret. Intrigued by the asylum's unsettling reputation, a paranormal investigator and their team decided to spend a night within its decaying confines. As night fell, the asylum seemed to come alive with torturate whispers and phantom footsteps. Shadows danced along the peeling wall popper and the investigator's equipment registered anomalous readings. The team delved into the asylum's dark history, discovering tales of unethical experiments, tormented patients, and a vengeful spirit-seeking retribution. Soon, the investigator and their team found themselves ensnared in the asylum's web of malevolence. Unseen forces played tricks on their senses, and the boundaries between reality and the supernatural blurred. Each member confronted their deepest fears, facing apparitions of the asylum's tormented past. The investigator, determined to unravel the mystery, ventured into the asylum's forbidden depths. There, they encountered the vengeful spirit, a manifestation of the suffering endured within those haunted halls. The asylum's curse clung to the investigator, forever altering their